2021 and 2022 were going to be huge years for the EV space. From newcomers like Rivian and Lordstown entering the market, to legacy brands like GM and BMW expanding their offerings, to our friends at Tesla continuing to push the industry forward, there's a lot to get excited about in the next couple of years. Crossover SUVs have gained a ton of popularity over the past two decades, and it appears they will be critical players in the EV war that's brewing. So that got me thinking, which EV crossover will be victorious? Hey everyone, Brandon here, and this is Time to Adult. If this is your first time here, thanks for stopping by. If not, thanks for coming back. Since their debut in the late 90s, crossovers have slowly gained popularity, now having the highest market share in the United States at about 40%. While individual pickup brands like the Ford F-150 dominate sales, crossovers as a whole account for the largest part of the overall vehicle market. This makes them a critical segment to capture in the transition to electric vehicles. Over the past few years, several companies have announced or released electric CUVs with varying degrees of success. But now it would seem that this new wave of crossovers has more promise. I recently did a video on EV trucks in which I compared the likes of the Rivian R1T and Tesla Cybertruck to the Bollinger B2 and the Hummer EV. It's been my most popular video and I really appreciate everyone who's watched it. In this video, we're going to do a similar comparison and see which crossover has what it takes to be successful. So let's start by defining a crossover. A crossover SUV is a type of SUV of unibody design that usually shares their platform with a passenger car. Examples of these are the Honda CRV, Toyota RAV4, and Kia Sportage. Unlike their large SUV siblings, which are usually based on truck platforms, these vehicles have a focus on comfort and fuel economy at the expense of greater utility and off-road capability. CUVs range in size from subcompacts like the Mercedes-Benz GLA to larger models like the Kia Telluride, which offers third row seats. CUVs are extremely popular in the US because their hatchback design strikes a balance between the comfort and styling of a car and the utility of a light truck. Electric CUVs have the potential to expand upon this, improving performance without sacrificing practicality. In this video, we're going to compare a handful of crossovers that I think are pretty promising, some of which are already on the market. These include the BMW iX, the Nissan Aria, the Cadillac Lyric, the Ford Mustang Mach-E, and of course, the Tesla Model Y. For criteria, we're going to look at six factors powertrain, battery tech and charging, autonomy and safety, utility and storage, appearance and brand appeal, and of course, cost. Both the list and criteria are very unscientific and just something I came up with based on my research. The list is far from exhaustive and if you'd like to see another vehicle that I didn't cover, let me know in the comments. With that, let's get to it. First up, the BMW iX. BMW's 30V is a welcome addition to the lineup that only includes a high-end sports car and a two-door compact. The iX, by contrast, seems to fit comfortably between the two, offering a wider appeal to consumers. The iX is built on BMW's latest electric powertrain technology that BMW plans to use in a wide range of vehicles. This is a similar approach to GM's Ultium platform, which will allow more flexibility in vehicle production. The dual motor powertrain offers up to 500 horsepower in a 0 to 60 of under 5 seconds. The iX battery will be up to 113 kilowatt hours and the range is estimated to be approximately 300 miles. This range seems to be the threshold that most EV makers are trying to hit and it doesn't surprise me that the iX is aiming for this. It will have up to 200 kilowatt DC fast charging and will be able to charge over 75 miles in about 10 minutes. Interesting to note that the BMW i Wallbox, which is their at-home charger, will offer level 2 charging in the home. BMW has collaborated with Amazon to offer this to customers in the home, and I think that it's a good step to help people understand that the majority of the time, cars will be charging in the home. For those instances where charging isn't feasible at home, BMW has partnered with EVgo, the largest DC fast charging network in the US, to offer charging up to 80% in about 40 minutes. 
BMW's charging app will integrate with the EVgo network of over 800 chargers to make charging more convenient for customers. Autonomous features were strikingly absent from the iX unveil and could hint at BMW's difficulty with implementation of this technology. Originally, the company had targeted level 3 charging for the iNext, the concept for the iX, but it would seem they've backed off. Utility doesn't seem to be a focus of the iX either, which makes sense because they're marketing this as a sport activity vehicle as opposed to a sport utility vehicle. I couldn't find anything on the storage of the trunk or frunk, and I can't even find images of either open. There's definitely a strong emphasis on luxury here. The classy interior with premium materials will make any luxury owner feel right at home. Features like the freestanding curved display and panoramic roof with electric shading also give this additional appeal. This car looks like a BMW while taking the company forward into the new EV era. There's no word on pricing yet, but it's probably going to be expensive. The i3 starts at just under $44,000, and comparable offerings from Jaguar and Mercedes start just under $70,000. Regardless, I do think it's a nice vehicle and that it'll fit well with its peers. The iX will debut in Germany first and hit the US market in early 2022. Next, let's look at the Nissan Aria. Nissan is no stranger to the EV game. With the exception of Tesla, the Leaf is probably the most well-known EV out there. Nissan is now moving its EVs into the mainstream with the Aria. The dual-motor all-wheel drive E-Force powertrain delivers up to 389 horsepower for a 0-60 to 60 time of under 5 seconds. The Aria offers two battery sizes, a 65 kWh battery and a 90 kWh battery, which will offer a range of up to 300 miles. It'll be capable of DC fast charging up to 130 kilowatts, which isn't great, but also isn't terrible. Nissan seems to be leaning into autonomy with its ProPilot Assist 2.0 ADAS technology. This appears to be a level 2 system offering active cruise control and auto steer on the highway. The Aria storage offerings are pretty standard with rear seats that fold down for additional space. Strangely, it doesn't seem to have a frunk, which isn't a deal breaker, but it is a bit disappointing. I don't really have much to say on the appearance other than it looks like a standard crossover. It's not bad looking, but it also doesn't really have any standout features. I do like the minimalist interior and I think it will appeal to its target market. The base price of the Aria is projected to be about $40,000 with the 300 mile range variant starting at about $45,000. This would put it in direct competition with the more affordable EVs that are coming out, widening its appeal significantly. If they can pull off the price for the specs, I think it will offer an excellent value to customers compared to others on this list. The Aria will release in Japan first and is expected to hit the US by the end of 2021. Next, the Ford Mustang Mach-E. Probably one of the most exciting offerings on this list, the Mustang Mach-E has a lot to live up to. It's been hyped as the first real competitor to the Tesla Model Y, and with the Mustang branding, it's going to have to deliver. The Mach-E has a dual-motor all-wheel drive powertrain capable of up to 459 horsepower and a 0-60 to 60 of mid-3 seconds, which would make it one of the quickest vehicles in its class. It will offer a 68-kilowatt battery and an 88-kilowatt battery, enabling a range of up to 300 miles for its extended range variant. DC fast charging will allow for charging up to 150 kilowatts, adding about 60 miles of range in about 10 minutes. This isn't great, but it is still workable. For public charging, Ford will offer the Ford Pass charging network, which includes over 13,500 public chargers. The Ford Pass app will be used to plan routes, locate chargers, and schedule charging. Ford will offer Copilot 360 2.0 an active driver assist system similar to others on this list which will enable hands-free driving on the highway that is this level 2 system will closely mirror GM's Super Cruise system minus a few key features like auto lane change the Mach-E will offer up to 64 cubic feet of storage with the rear seats folded and the frunk added which is pretty good for utility from an appearance perspective I like the exterior it has a nice sporty feel while still looking practical I'm more neutral on the interior though. While I like the minimalist design, I'm not a huge fan of the portrait orientation of the screen or the giant knob at the bottom. 
I see where Ford is going with this as having access to a physical element is pretty important when you're driving, but I'm just personally not a fan. I do think overall that it will appeal to its target market. The Mustang is an iconic brand, and while I'm sure some Mustang purists lost their minds when they saw this, I'm a Ford truck man. I still think that overall, it will sell well. The Mach-E will start at a competitive $42,890 and is expected to start rolling out models later this year. On to the Cadillac Lyric. GM is placing significant hopes on its high-end brands with the introduction of the Hummer EV and the Cadillac Lyric. With this offering, they're looking to compete with other luxury brands such as the Audi e-tron, the Jaguar I-Pace, and the BMW iX. The powertrain is based on GM's Ultium platform and comes in a single and dual motor variant. GM hasn't released a 0 to 60 time or horsepower as of yet, but performance is expected to be comparable to others in its class. The Ultium battery technology used in the Lyric will incorporate an NMC battery chemistry that adds aluminum to drive down cost and increase range. Check out my Tesla mining video if you're interested in learning more about battery chemistries. The Lyric is expected to have a 100 kilowatt hour battery which will provide over 300 miles of range. DC fast charging will enable charge rates of up to 150 kilowatts, which is again not great, but still pretty standard. GM has equipped the Lyric with Super Cruise, its driver assist technology, which will enable hands-free driving on compatible highways. Super Cruise recently made waves when it outscored Tesla's autopilot in a Consumer Reports report. But before everyone starts calling victory for GM, it's critical to note that autopilot still won in capabilities and performance, as well as ease of use. Super Cruise got high marks in driver engagement, unresponsive driver, and clear when safe to use categories. Essentially, Super Cruise scored higher because it's better at ensuring that drivers use the system properly, not because the underlying technology is superior. Still, Super Cruise's performance is quite admirable, and it is one of the more advanced systems on the market. It has a strong emphasis on safety, which is never a bad thing when lives are at stake. Like the iX, the Lyric is focused more on luxury than utility, which makes sense considering its target market. I couldn't find storage specs on it, but it likely has decent storage with the seats folded down. That is, if they fold down. GM put a lot of focus into the design of this car, and the result is something that feels both luxurious and futuristic. The Lyric is all about lighting and technology. Illuminated grills and emblems that play animations when you approach? Done. Ambient lighting in the cabin to include speaker lights? Yeah, they got that. 33 inch curved display? Yup. Not to mention an AKG Studio 19 speaker system, and my personal favorite, a dual plane AR heads up display. It could be more gimmicky than useful, but I'm a fan of HUDs and I'm kind of hoping that this one is more useful. The overall styling definitely screams high end. Even the divided seats feel premium. This is in keeping with the Cadillac brand, which is viewed as a status symbol in both the US and abroad. Price-wise, details are scarce, but speculation is that it will start around $60,000, which is very competitive compared to other offerings of the European luxury brands. The Cadillac Lyric is expected to release in 2022. Finally, let's look at the Tesla Model Y. Full disclosure, I'm very biased when it comes to Tesla. As a fan, shareholder, and Model Y owner myself, I love this company and their mission but my overall involvement with Tesla gives me a more informed perspective about the vehicle's strengths and its flaws. So here we go. The Tesla Model Y is hands down the best electric crossover in its class. That being the case, it is far from perfect. The Model Y has a dual motor all wheel drive powertrain which offers 456 horsepower for a zero to 60 of 3.5 seconds. The 75 kilowatt hour battery uses Tesla's 2170 cells with an MCA battery chemistry offering an EPA range of up to 326 miles. This is all likely to change as Tesla transitions to the 4680 cells with the nickel manganese chemistry and significantly improves range as explained in Tesla's battery day. Charging is one of Tesla's many strengths and their robust supercharger network contains over 20,000 stalls worldwide. V3 supercharging offers speeds up to 250 kilowatts, enabling up to 150 miles of range in about 15 minutes. This crushes most competitors and adds to the ease of travel with a Tesla. All you have to do at a supercharger is plug in. No special app is needed and no payments are taken. Everything is done via your Tesla account automatically without even your input. Despite the hard time Tesla's been getting about autopilot, it's still the most advanced autonomous driving system that one can own. 
Autopilot FSD enables the car to drive on highways and essentially travel from one on-ramp to the destination off-ramp with no intervention using Navigate on Autopilot. It's capable of changing lanes based on traffic and taking exits with no input. It can recognize and stop at stoplights as well as stop signs, and it can even be summoned in a parking lot with varying degrees of success. Tesla's recent closed beta update shows it driving on city streets and even making 90 degree turns, which is just crazy. When it works, it's pretty amazing, and it works most of the time. I have run into issues with it braking way too aggressively and even some phantom braking, which others have reported. It also requires you to keep your hands on the wheel, which is annoying and easily exploited. Personally, I don't care, but I can see why people like Consumer Reports took issue with the lack of driver monitoring. Tesla may address this later as there is a cabin camera in the Model Y. This car has a ton of storage. The rear seats easily fold down for seamless loading. There's also additional storage under the trunk and in the spacious front, offering a total of 68 cubic feet of storage. From an appearance perspective, Tesla prioritized simplicity above all, which works quite well. It's not as pretty or luxurious as others on this list, but everything from the vegan leather seats to its 15 inch display that controls all but the actual driving feels intentional and can honestly still compete with comparable entry level and mid range luxury vehicles. The Tesla brand is synonymous with EV and the company is known for having cars with the best specs of any EV in its class. Tech is a huge deal for Tesla and over the air updates ensure that the vehicle continually improves long after purchase. The Model Y starts at $49,990 for the long range all wheel drive variant which is on the low end compared to others on this list. Tesla plans to release a rear wheel drive variant which should drop the price between $5,000 and $10,000. They're also planning a Model Y with third row seats which will add to the utility but a lot of people are skeptical as to the actual implementation of it and how practical it will be. The Model Y offers a significant value compared to other vehicles in its class. But there's also one factor that gives it a major advantage over vehicles on this list. It actually exists on the roads today. All advertised specs are real and tested. Now time will tell if these other vehicles will be successful and ultimately I hope they are. We all stand to benefit from an electric future and if these vehicles do take off it'll be a proof to these companies that they're worth investing more in. I'm super excited about the future of EVs and I think as more hit the market with better specs, more people will finally take the plunge and transition to a more sustainable form of transport. But what do you think? Are you excited for EVs to take over the crossover segment? Was your favorite one on this list? Which one would you like me to talk more about in depth? Let me know in the comments. If you like this video, be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and check out some of my other videos. This is a new channel and I'd really appreciate it. With that, I'm Brandon, and this is Time to Adult. Thank you so much for watching, and I wish you the best on your journey toward a better tomorrow.